Now I will go very fast to our next schedule point um, in order to discuss together the panel discussion on ports. Um, as you all we know, to facilitate greater trade with the world, African ports need to embrace innovation, automata automation and simplification. Ports then can take a step closer toward enriching the continent. In our panel discussion, key challenges of African ports, I'm very delighted to welcome Mr. Chris Kosmala, who will be the session chair of this discussion. Chris is a partner at Click and Connect, a consulting company dedicated to solving prob business and technology in the area of international logistics. Chris, I'm happy to welcome you with us and the floor is yours right now to introduce our panelists and go ahead with the discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Rana. Uh, good afternoon to you and uh, good afternoon uh, to um, all of the participants in uh, this event. Um, I do have um, a, a very interesting uh, panel. Uh, the subject, of course, um, requires significantly more than uh, 25 minutes uh, uh, that we have allocated uh, to this session. Uh, however, um, just as Rana mentioned, um, if you do have questions, um, uh, please uh, uh, forward them to the organizers, put them in the chat. Uh, we we do not address them during the, the panel. Uh, we will definitely take care of uh, answering them uh, following, following this discussion. Uh, with me here in in a digital studio, I have uh, Mr. Molid Aden, uh, who is a director at Djibouti Ports and Free Zones Authority. Uh, prior to um, uh, joining Djibouti Ports, um, uh, Molid uh, spent time at the DP World in Dakar, where he was responsible for terminal efficiency in projects. Uh, Molly specializes in project management, international business, and negotiations in public-private partnerships. I also have uh, with me uh, Mr. Afri um, uh, Sayekwasi, who is the officer in charge of missions at the San Pedro port. It's the second major port at uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Um, with over 14 years of experience, um, Afri uh, specializes in project management, uh, business development in the fields of seaport, maritime, and access corridors in all countries in Africa, um, especially in West and Central Africa. So, um, uh, gentlemen, uh, Molit and, uh, and Afri, welcome. Uh, I would like to launch, uh, launch our panel with uh, a challenging question, which, uh, which uh, I will invite you to answer. Uh, Essentially, with your, with your based on your experience and um, with uh, with your understanding of the situation. So the first first question to launch our panel is: uh, a well located and efficient ports are critical to success of African exporters and importers. And the development of African economies also depends greatly on the ports. We know because Africa depends on uh, sea freight. In your opinion, do you think that at this moment, African ports are mostly developing ahead of the economies or they are actually behind the curve? They are actually slowing down or, or representing a bottle of the development of the economies? Uh, let me start with um, Mr. Aden. Uh, Molit, uh, could you please um, uh, express your opinion on the subject? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, can everyone hear me? I also had time to spend around a uh, few years in Africa, uh, mainly uh, Algeria, Mozambique, and later I'm back. Uh, to answer the question, in my personal opinion, in Africa, we are actually doing a catch up. So we are behind the curve. And the reason is, so if you take, if you take a look at between, let's say, 250 million developing countries do not tend to have those those funds. At the same time, I mean, coming from the African country that do not necessarily have uh, an infrastructure. So I'll take the example of Djibouti, for example. All the infrastructure development that has taken place during the last 10 years 
for how you see it's going to be growing in the next five to ten years. But we have not chosen the model of Dubai, which is basically has been very famous for creating the space, creating the infrastructure, and then the market will come. So in one word, Africans tend to lag behind in terms of African development, catch up when they see the market. Because of development, because of technological, and mainly because of a lack of strategic planning. Uh, Afri, uh, with a question now to you. Um, do you see ports uh, slowing down the continent, or do you see the ports actually being ahead of the game? What uh, What is your opinion on this matter? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Afri, like you were saying. Uh, I'm a project ma uh, manager. I was a project manager of port of um, a solution in port and, um, uh, management. But uh, what I wanted to say right now, I can say yes or no. Uh, because uh, in Africa, the, the economy is very different. You can say in North Africa, they can, we can say that they are, they are following the, the development, the economic uh, African development. But in maybe uh, we can say in West Africa, for example, we have some, um, some parts where they, they are doing their best, like uh, Abidjan ports, like uh, Cotonou ports, uh, to try to follow the, the, the development of, of African economy. But if you want to take the average uh, ports in, in Africa, you can say, like uh, uh, the former uh, speaker just saying, we are at the end of the development of African economies. But you can't say every, 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 every port in Africa uh, are not doing uh, their best because all of them try to build a very good infrastructure to be in the, uh, in the level where, the, where they can easily um, follow the development of uh, African uh, economy. So for me, uh, we can continue to encourage uh, the ports are doing their best, like I was saying, uh, in North uh, Africa, even Djibouti. Even Djibouti, they are doing uh, what they can't. Uh, they can't uh, in uh, South Africa, also with the Duban ports, and uh, of course in uh, West Africa with Abidjan ports, and also Nigeria. But we still have a lot of challenges to face uh, to be in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the level. Uh, thank you, Afri. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because that uh, brings me uh, neatly into, uh, into a, a question that I had in the back of my mind. This is the side of the carriers. So uh, the way I see it right now, um, Africa faces two challenges, essentially. Um, one is uh, from the carrier side. It's, uh, one is the, this uh, long-term trend, which is uh, the carriers um, essentially ordering uh, the larger and larger ships. And what, what, that is have, what that is actually causing is that uh, number of ships, um, which they would consider small or medium-sized ships, are being cascaded down to, uh, to uh, regional ports, um, which, is, uh, which is seen in Africa right now, where uh, those, uh, those larger ships are coming in, into ports. Um, and the second issue, which is, which is uh, really related right now, uh, mostly to the response of the carriers, um, to the supply chain crisis in Europe and North America, where they essentially reallocated a large capacities uh, from serving Africa, from serving Latin America, onto this trade, Asia, North America, Asia, Europe. So in the context of these, of these two trends, I, I have a question about uh, the nature of the investment of the African ports. So what should African ports think about when investing in major upgrades to ensure that they remain attractive or they become attractive to carriers to actually send their ships to these ports. Um, uh, Afri, let's, uh, let's start with you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you to start with me. Uh, me, I will start to say that uh, African, African uh, port authority can't continue to follow what the world wants to do. Because we don't have the same uh, issue, we don't have the same problem we are facing. In Africa right now, we, uh, if you are seeing the import and export uh, goods, 
Uh, we are we imported a lot of a lot of goods from outside manufactured goods already to to our our country, and we are exported. Um, uh, a, a, a material not with a container, but uh, uh, in the bulk, uh, all those uh, kind of 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 of, of, of um, system we are using to 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 send out our our goods. So we can follow what the world wants with the career right now. All the career are doing a very bigger chips. We don't have we don't have uh, a infrastructure for that. For this new 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 type of of, of, the, of, of uh, this economy, right now all the countries in Africa want to be a hub. You can see right now in on, only in West Africa, um, Abidjan wants to be a hub. Togo already uh, is a hub. Uh, Dakar right now they are doing uh, they are building a new port to be a hub. So every port can be a hub, but it's because now the carriers want uh, are building a very big ship uh, 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 ships, so we want to follow what they are doing. So for me, we don't need to do to do it like, like that. We can uh, grow our our uh, our transaction between us and create a hub like uh, maybe five hub or six hub. When I'm seeing in Africa, uh, we can't we can't get more than five or six hubs. We have a hub already in uh, in uh, Tangier Med. We have a hub in uh, uh, Egypt. We have a hub also in uh, Dubai. Uh, maybe we can get one Djibouti or or Kenya. And we have another one. We have uh, uh, another one already in uh, West Africa with Togo ports. I think that what the 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 the, the port authority have to do is to create is a commodity to handle easily the 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 the, 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 the chip we have now. But we mm. don't need to upgrade our 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 infrastructure only. To get a bigger, a bigger ships because the the ships they are coming bigger day by day. So mm -hmm. if you have to for sure we can uh, address very well what we have to do. So we have to get a, a, a very good plan for that. And for that, for me to get a very good plan is to um, to maintain what we have in our market first before trying to be a a hub. This is what I wanted to say about uh, the bigger chips they are doing every time. Mm, okay, uh, Molit, um, uh, how do you see it? If, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, just uh, just um, uh, talking to to the words that Afri just said. Uh, you know, the big issue is, of course, if the ships are bigger, uh, obviously one of the big issues is dredging, right? Because obviously the ports uh, the ports uh, need to deepen the access channels. They need to deepen the uh, turning basins. Uh, they need to uh, they need to uh, improve uh, depth at berths. Uh, but the moment you you dredge and you bring bigger ship, then you suddenly have to invest in cranes, right? You need bigger, more efficient cranes to serve those bigger ships. So it just it just keeps cascading, right? I mean, it's it's like forever chasing your tail. Uh, what is, in your opinion, what, what should African ports think about when investing in these major upgrades to ensure uh, that the, the they are attractive to the carriers? What do you think? Uh, per, per, personally, I think I, 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 would ag I would agree with some of what Afri said. It, it's, you ca we can locate up everyone. But my biggest worry is, rather than upgrading, what is the risk of creating a white elephant? So in other words, you, you undertake a huge major infrastructure, you buy mega super cranes, you do yeah. two meters key site, and then the customer never arrives. And I tell you what, to have those big hubs, it will not work unless you have an anchor client. And the anchor client are mainly the five main carriers. Those five main carriers will not be present in Djibouti and then go to Kenya. It cannot happen. But at the same time, Africa is moving towards African trade, uh, integration of the African economy. So for port authorities that I work for, and, and thankfully I have been both sides of the coin because I was working for an operator and now I'm working for the port authority, 
is we all want to be on the bandwagon. We all want to be the hub. We all want to be the next big thing. But is it worth it? Because sometimes you can achieve greater numbers and greater volume by making sure that your trade, you understand your trade, you understand your route, you understand your platform, and you adapt to, to the needs. If you can manage to get a partnership between one of those big fives and the Port Authority and the coming in together, you can create hubs. And, and, and a good example is Dante Met, for example, and in Lome, where you have MEC as being the anchor clients. So uh, looking forward, carriers will always do the economy of scales. It's fine, they don't want to do the economy of cost. But not all African countries can be a hub. And every yes. African port authority needs to see how we can work with the complementarity. And what we haven't seen in Africa that we have seen in Europe is, and I, was, I, had, I, had, I have been lucky enough to, to spend some time in Europe, is you have ports, for example, in Belgium and Germany try to integrate together, or even in Dutch or in Holland, to be able to cater for the interland, the main carriers and have a value added between the two. So I think it's for Africa the time to think about how we can complementarize, how we can have a value addition between the two port authorities or three port authorities to create this regional hub so everyone has a, a portion of the pie rather than everyone yeah. seeking to become the D1. And right now, unfortunately, the African port authorities are trying to become D1, including Djibouti. Yes, yes. That's a, that's a good point, right? I mean, you did mention Tanger Med and obviously Djibouti. Uh, there is advantage of the location, right? Uh, the ports have volumes both as a gateway and as a transshipment. Uh, that is not the case, of course, with many ports uh, further down the coast, uh, either on the West Coast or the East Coast. But uh, since we're in this topic, obviously the carrier will come to the port um, and will guarantee the calls if they have guaranteed uh, consistent volumes and profitable trade. Um, and obviously, the the very interesting situation is, you know, specifically in 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 Djibouti, uh, where the free trade zone built around the port is, is actually stimulating uh, um, uh, activity, industrial activity, which produces demand, which is attractive to the carriers. So they actually, let's say, call call on the port. Um, how do you view and and you know we'll, let's start with uh, Maurice with you uh, since uh, since you've seen it for, first you're you're seeing this firsthand in Djibouti uh, the importance of of uh, free trade zones so FTAs uh, you know UK UK is looking at the examples from China right they're trying to um, to establish uh, 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 free zones around the ports um, Africa obviously. Is uh, some ports consider that to a greater degree, some some ports to a lesser degree. Uh, are they important? Is it important that you have the the the, uh, the FTZ um, uh, around the port? And the question for this is is actually there was a secondary question behind it. If you have FTZ, then suddenly the businesses start moving into the uh, free trade zones. Uh, uh, causing a brain drain, let's say, farther out in the hinterland, outside of the free trade zones, right? So that's the reason why many countries are, con are concerned about this, right? Where you rob essentially the same businesses from one place and you move them into the free trade zones. Uh, Maurit, what do you say? How do you see the role of these free trade zones in context of Africa? Uh, Chris, it is very interesting because about two years ago, I wrote a paper. And uh, in that paper that was uh, presented to the French Ministry of, of Economy as part of the Euro, I defended greatly, and I will forward it to you after that, I defended greatly that the model of ports and free zone were a model of development for Africa. And I took the Djibouti case, which has yielded results for the last 20 years, no doubt about it. But, but the main issue is, and I will go with the pitfalls at the back, it's when you create free zones, those free zones are actually a world on its own. It may create great volumes in terms of GDP, GDP and trade for the country, but it doesn't actually create value in terms of taxation, th those resources that the state needed to require to be able to sustain some of those other services, because the Port Authority remains, remains a, a public entity. Free zones, in the, in the study that I undertook with Djibouti, is, has created value. For every dollar that we spend on a, on, on a port development and with a free zone development, it has generated GDP growth. Yes. The last 20 years, Djibouti's GDP growth has gone from 
1.5 billion to probably two and a half, 2.5 USD billions in 10 years. He creates that. But, but is it the basis of actually every African country trying to create a port and a free zone? What, what, what you're going to end up having is the whole trade being modeled on, on a free trade and a port, which actually yes. will hinder the development of the other infrastructure. And now that I'm growing beyond being bold, is what I'm trying to find out is because we invested in those infrastructure, which are ports and free zones, we may have forgotten the roads, we may have forgotten the, the other accessories and infrastructure that create better connectivity beyond the gates, beyond the free zone. The train, for example, of Djibouti and, and Ethiopia has, has been one of the major BRI game plus. But if we continue taking the model of the free zones and ports together as being the, so, the, 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 the fundamentals of development, we tend to forget others. And those roads, those, as those airports, those dry ports, which are necessary in a whole supply chain, tend to be forgotten. So free zones mm -hmm. should not be the raison d'etre for any port free zone model. I think we need the whole ecosystem to be able to, to cater for Africa infrastructure development and challenges. Mm, uh, thank you, Molly. Um, Afri, I have uh, uh, I have a question that uh, has to move us to the next topic uh, because uh, I think the organizers uh, are trying to uh, to uh, keep our panel here uh, moving and and yes. up a little bit. But um, I wanted to say something quickly about the free zone. Ah, okay. Quickly, just just in thirty seconds. Like I wanted to say to add uh, what uh, just uh, the Jimmy guy just saying is uh, I think that. The free zone does not be for a country. Africa, if you are seeing in a long coastal in the West and Central Africa, we have around 24 ports. In the small part, if you are seeing, it's almost 300 kilometers per, per port. So we can say we want to create a free zone for our own, only our country. In West Africa, for example, with ECOWAS, they create the free zone but it's not working like they want to, 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 to do. So for me, this is one of the approach we have to take it up and create a, a real free zone. Maybe we, we, they are trying to create an Africa free zone, but they can start with a, a sub-region free zone and after that go to uh, the Africa uh, free zone. So I just wanted to uh, add these points before going to the next uh, next uh, next point okay that's uh, that's great uh, you know this uh, this whole discussion of FTZ is of course uh, you know we can uh, we can have uh, the entire session actually just about this right because the the nature of the structure agreements and how they impact the uh, development of the hinterland but uh, uh, coming back to the ports uh, themselves um, uh, granting concession port concessions is is important. Uh, quite important to, in acceleration of the ports transition from uh, fr from the uh, legacy uh, uh, way of operating and functioning to to the more modern approach to execution of the operations to the development to the investment in infrastructure and so on. Uh, how should the country consider port operators' capability uh, to bring vision, know-how, expertise, investment uh, capability? I'm asking about this because I, I see these moves by, by DP World, right, which announced a $2 billion fund to develop African ports. Uh, a big chunk of that money is going to come uh, into Dakar uh, port. Uh, but I, I, also, I also see uh, uh, DP World actively pursuing um, uh, development in Luanda, right? Where they just got, um, uh, that's Angola port. Uh, they got concession over there. Um, obviously, Chinese players are active. How should the country go about saying, okay, well, I would like to link up with the operator because operator eventually uh, brings stability and, uh, and efficiency and performance, and that brings the carrier, right? So how, how should the countries go about this, uh, granting concession? Amoli, with you. Oh, God. Uh, I've been... Hi. Can you hear oh, me? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Actually, you know, it's um, uh, since you were talking about the FTZ, uh, let's just uh, let's just go back to Afri. Apologies for that. <laughs> yes, yes, I was waiting to 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 hear my name, but uh, no, what I no, wanted to say about, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to say about this one, um, what the people have to know that Africa needs the, the, the investment in the port is very high in Africa. We need it because all of all of the, of the ports want now to upgrade their infrastructure. But the thing is, we have to get a strongly involved government in port investment project for better planning of the project. It's good to have the, the different operator because we need it. We don't have a lot of money to invest in the super uh, infrastructure for the, for the ports. But what I wanted to mention, because I was in the port management association, I saw a lot of things. What I wanted to mention, and we did a lot of studies about a port concession, but the concession must be balanced to preserve the collective interest. We need, it's true, we need money from outside. We need the private, even inside in our country. We can uh, gather money to, to invest in the ports, but we have to get a, a, a concession, win-win concession, to avoid some of the problem we got. For example, we got a problem in, um, uh, in Cameroon. In Cameroon, I think that at the beginning of 2020, uh, with uh, Bolore, if I, if, I, if, I, if I know uh, very well the, the history. So this is the way we, the people are, are going. We need investors. We need people to come to invest for, the, for the, our infrastructure. But we need also the people to be very clear with us to get a win-win uh, 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 concession. Because if you are doing right now, and we are not doing a very good, uh, uh, we don't have a very good agreement. For now, you can take advantage. But in five, 10 years, because you know in Africa, the, one of the problems we have in Africa here, the, the political, uh, the government, they are not too stable. So if you are dealing with one of the governments and we are not dealing with the, in the right way, in five or 10 years, if you have another government, or maybe even is the same government, and the new mind, because the people in Africa now, they are building very well their capacity. So we have, we have almost the same, the same level. So for, the, for maybe five or 10 years, we can take it back some of agreements and now uh, not Okay, um, let me jump in uh, here since we froze with uh, Afri. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm getting a message that uh, our panel has to come to a conclusion. Um, so I just want to encourage everybody to ask these questions. Uh, I mean, we touched, um, we touched uh, uh, four very, very large topics. Um, uh, performance of the ports, uh, uh, interactions with the carriers, um, uh, the issues of uh, um, uh, free zones, uh, the issue of, of investing in the right operator to bring it in. I think, uh, uh, Maulid, um, if, if I can ask you on just that last subject, since you have a PPP experience, the private-public uh, partnerships, um, obviously ports are strategic, so countries do not want to lose control of the port completely, and therefore they don't want to give up give up the control of the port for the investment. Um, how do you have any, like a, a short advice on how to deal with structure of these PPPs and how, how to approach them in such a way that they benefit the port and the country, not just simply the operator who gets a very long, very long and very profitable concession? Chris, I think I've got a unique opportunity and a unique view on the issue because I was part of the teams that discussed, negotiated, implemented Green Project Dakar as plan. Two half years in Dakar. I was in Djibouti with part of uh, the old operation. Uh, depending on how you see, is the glass full or is the glass half empty or half full? The, the, the jury is still out there. For the African country, I think there's a complete lack of strategic vision. And when I say strategic vision is, we all tend to see what will be the gain right now. And the gain is volume, stability, revenue, shareholdings, royalties, whatever you want to take. 
But the maritime domain is evolving so fast that you're moving from, a, from the port being an asset for the government rather than being a strategic asset that it has become. So becoming mm. a national asset where it's going forward because more or less the BRI concept has completely revolution, re revolutionized how we see ports and terminals. And now we're moving towards an era of, we go beyond the business, it becomes more of a strategic choice. So partners and operators become strategic partners rather than being a pure operator that you have in yes, Australia, yes. in the world, or even in Europe. So I think we should be going one step backwards and letting ports and terminals to be a business that will can increase revenue, improve the trade, create revenue for the government. But if we take to the level that I see the next stage as becoming an asset of strategic asset importance, will require even a, a more complicated concession terms. And I think, I think, I think China merchant has completely changed uh, the way concessions are, are being done. And the reason I'm saying that they're not even talking about hundreds of millions, they're talking about billions of dollars of investment. So we're going from a, a small concession of 20 years to a concession of 99 years. So the time scale is changing, the terms of reference are changing, and I think the African countries, including me as an African, we should be thinking about what we're getting involved in the first place. How right. are we getting value beyond uh, the BOT terms? Are we giving right. away an asset at a cheaper price today that will improve greatly in the next 20 years? And how do we find the balance between generating revenue for the shareholders and creating revenue for the government? And, uh, so if, if, um, if, if, if what I'm taking away from uh, from what you're saying is really, you know, uh, since the it's really critical to look for somebody who doesn't doesn't just uh, talk partnership, but actually has tangible proposal on the table as a part of the concession to be a real partner rather than just simply an operator for the duration of the concession. Yes, and I will add, and I will add up another thing is African countries for the last 10, 15 years that I was involved, for the last 10 years that I was involved in the port industry is, have been lacking the skills to negotiate a proper PPP. And I think, and I, and I think we freaking need to, 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 to raise up the standards and not to be taken Excellent. for, not taken for a ride. And, and we have okay, seen Afri, Yeah, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm getting that we'll be disconnected here in a second. So um, I have to give the floor back to, uh, to Rana. However, Molid and Afri, thank you very much for, uh, for the discussion over here. It was a pleasure to, to facilitate uh, this quick run through, through so many issues related to ports. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, please either ask them now or address them to us and we'll answer them following this session. Rana, over to you.